What's going on everyone? I'm Jody. This is Inspire Woodcraft. Welcome to 2019. I am so excited for the new year to be here, although I'm a little curious as to where the whole last year went. Anyways, if you are a regular to this channel, I appreciate it. Thank you so much from my family to yours. Happy New Year. Now some of you might notice right away that I'm still in the shop, but the lighting's a little weird, and that's because I picked up a couple soft boxes and change my audio a little bit so things sound and look a little bit different. I'm experimenting. I'm trying to get a good feel for how I want the beginning of each video to sound and in 2019 that's something I really want to hammer home. I really want to get a similar feel to all my videos. I want to shoot a little bit differently, get a little more artistic with it because it turns out I really like making videos. Who would have thunk it? So we do have some softbox lighting that we added in and I won't know what this looks like really too much uh, until I go to edit so hopefully it's friendly and hopefully this works for everyone else. I will tell you that soft boxes, as far as photography goes, has been an absolute night and day game changer. I've been able to rock some pretty amazing product shots and I'm pretty excited for how we can use these down the road. So I don't know if I'll be able to use them in video uh, or not, but let's just play it by ear. Now this is what you came to see, so I will stop rambling as always. I do mountainscapes two different ways. I do what I call a 30 degree rule and I do what I call a 45 degree rule. 30 degree rule works like this. We have a bunch of strips that are all going the same direction. This cut is at 30 degrees. This cut is the opposite, 30 degrees. But because they all lay on top of each other like that, you're able to stack pieces right next to each other and get the illusion of peaks being maybe behind each other. 45 degree rule is going to be the opposite. As opposed to them all laying together, they're all gonna be at opposing 45 degree angles. 45 and 45 is 90, 30, 30, and 30 is 90. And that's where those two rules they're my rules, whatever, come to play. So like most things that I do, I like to sketch something out and get a good design down first. And so that's how I would start these two projects. Now I'm gonna do one of each and show you guys how I go about doing them. As far as material goes, material I like to use fence board. That's my number one go-to when I'm doing these mountainscapes. The reason is because they're cheap, most of the time they're free. I like to plane one side and square up one edge and then rip them through the table saw to one to one and a half inch strips. And once I have that design, I'll go through on my backer board, we're gonna call it a canvas, and I'll lay out that design on said canvas. A lot of times I start with the bigger mountain. So the bigger mountain is gonna require the most material. So I'll pick some of the longer stock out of my pile and then I'll go ahead and trim it up at 30 degrees. So I'm just gonna set my miter table to 30 degrees and I'm gonna flush up this one end. Once I make that flush cut, I can bring it over to the canvas and I can just make a mark where I wanna make the opposing 30 degree cut. Now, when I make that mark, I bring it off of the plywood a little bit. I'm trying to give myself just a little bit of room so that when I trim it up on the table saw later, I'll be able to ride up against the fence if necessary. I'll flip the saw to the other 30 degree mark and I'll just go ahead and cut it, obviously where I made my pencil mark. So flipping the end cuts around, I can just mate it up to, to the peak that I already created and I can just make another mark and well, you can see we have our first mountain. Now the rest of it's gonna flow just like that. Because this is the 30 degree rule, all your cuts are just gonna be at 30 degrees. Maybe you'll swing the saw the other way to the other 30 degrees, but the whole thing lays out the same. And what's great about this is you can change your design as you go. And really you're only following that one mountain to the left and to the right, but all your cuts end up being the same and you're just laying those pieces next to each other. For the end cuts, I like to use a bandsaw. I like to trim up the sides just so I don't have to get my hands anywhere near a blade. Now this one I decided I want to do a moon and to do that a lot of times I'll use a compass, I'll draw a bigger circle, I'll move the point of the compass over and I'll draw a smaller circle and that's where you'll get the tips of the crescent moon. 
And this step isn't always necessary, but on this particular piece, I'm using a piece of old stair tread, and so the piece was a little thick, so I resawed that on the bandsaw, cut out my shape, I'd sand it down on the sander, and that'll give me a nice crescent moon. Now I want the illusion of the moon coming out from behind the mountain, and so I'll just take the peak of that and trace where I wanna make those cuts, and I'll make those cuts and take that void piece out. And I'll go through and I'll sand up the edges, not to make it smooth, I wanna keep that rustic reclaimed look, but just enough to get the splinters and burrs off of it, and then I'll sand down that canvas and give us a nice clean, smooth slate so we can stain later. Now, 45 degree rule almost works the same way, only you're gonna be making opposing cuts. So I'll go through and I'll flush cut at 45 degrees, and I'll come through and I'll mark where I need that other 45 degrees at. Now, this is where people get kind of confused. I'll let the visual do the explanation on some of this, but basically, same thing. You're gonna go through 45 degrees, switch to an alternating 45 degrees. You might make a cut at 90 degrees, depending on if you're butting into another mountain, another peak but the layout afterwards is the same. Now once I'm happy with the overall design, I'll go ahead and start coloring. And I'll just go ahead and draw a light pencil mark tracing the peaks and the ridges of the mountain so that I have a good layout line of where I'm gonna put stain. This is also where I'd paint snow on the caps if that's what I'm after. You wanna make sure you also get the size because this is a three-dimensional art piece. You're gonna be able to see that stuff from the sides and it just looks incomplete if you don't paint the sides as well. On the light blue sky, most of the time I have to make my own colors. I'll use whitewash and a little bit of blue dye or something to get a nice baby blue. I'm just gonna paint or stain up to that line that we just traced. For the dark blue sky, Varathane Warm Navy is what I typically use. It's just It just makes a really good nighttime color. And on this, because it's bare plywood, I let it all soak in for a couple minutes and then wipe it all back down. It looks kind of bland on film, but in person it actually turned out really well. One of these mountains is gonna be your reference point. For me, again, it's usually the bigger one. To install, I'm just gonna use glue. The first piece, I'm gonna use wood glue. I'm gonna use super glue, super glue in the corners, wood glue in the field. And I'm gonna use this piece as my starter. So I'm gonna go ahead and lay that in place. I'm gonna double check it with the protractor to make sure that it's at the right angle and it's at the right spot. Most of the rest of them, I'm just gonna use wood glue. I like to kind of smear them around a little bit, get a nice little suction going on. And after that, they'll dry there themselves. And on the smaller pieces, you can actually get away with just using a dab of super glue, CA glue of some sort. And you want to make sure that you don't get too much around the edges where you're going to get squeeze out. That squeeze out is going to come out, it's going to bleed into your sky. So it's really important to pay attention where you put your glue on some of these pieces. Now the pieces in the field aren't going to matter, they're going to get covered up by other pieces. But the ones around the ridges and the peaks, you don't want to get too close to the edge. Assembly with the 45 degree rule works the same way. You're gonna have one as a reference point and the rest are gonna fall into place. Now I'm trimming quite a bit off because to be honest, I screwed up my measurements, but this is why we wanna leave room along the edges. I go through and I trim it all off with a table saw. Some people use a skill saw afterwards. I don't like how abusive the skill saw is and I don't like running a skill saw over all the bumpiness. But with the table saw, we can lay our plywood down and get nice even passes all the way around to really true and square this thing up. So afterwards, I'll make a frame. I like to just use either leftover fence boards or in my case, out of an old two by 12 I had laying around. I'll just go ahead and mark with a pencil where I want it. I don't really take any measurements on these. And then I'll just go ahead and make a simple box frame for it. And to glue, I just wanna run a strip of glue towards the bottom of it. It's just gonna seal up against the plywood backer. And then I'll bring it to the edge of the table and go ahead and throw a few staples in it to hold it in place while the glue dries. And I'll do that all the way around. I like to use parchment paper or something underneath to keep the glue off my bench.
So when they're all dried and wrapped up, a light sanding will usually do the trick, just enough to knock off the edges and make them more manageable. And then a couple coats of clear water-based poly is usually what I use to seal them up and bring the colors to life. Now these are super simple to make. The details you do wanna pay attention to, but I think this is a really good starter project for someone that's got a few tools, but has projects that they wanna do and experiment with. I like artsy stuff for the fact that you can use your imagination. You can use your imagination a little bit more than say building a drawer for a dresser. It's up to you what you want in the sky. If you want a sky, you can make a sunset. I've seen people use scroll saws to make really cool designs. Uh, I don't have a scroll saw, otherwise I might try doing that myself. I like the moon, I like the sun. I think those are pretty common, subtle things. I think that about wraps it up. If you guys have any questions, as always, leave me a comment down below. And also, if the audio and lighting in this is a plus or a negative, let me know. Let me know what you think I should change. You guys know I'm totally new at all this stuff and I'm kind of winging it and learning as I go. So if you have any helpful suggestions, let me know. I'll be sure to read as many of them as I can and get back to you guys. Again, Happy New Year to all you guys. I really appreciate all the love and support. As always, thanks so much for watching. I will see you guys in the next video.